Hello, my name is Attila Bakos, and this time I will talk about an issue with Fujifilm Movie Files in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, and we will see whether it's present in Final Cut Pro or not. To put it in a nutshell, if you are shooting internally with the X-T2, X-H1 or X-T3 or possibly any other Fujifilm camera, and you import your files into Premiere or Resolve, then chances are that you are looking at wrong colors. Uh, we are in Resolve now and I will show you two clips that were shot simultaneously on the X-T3. The first one is internal H.265 and the second one is coming from the Ninja V. And as you can see the Ninja V file has more contrast and the reason for that is that both are recorded using the full range but ProRes files are interpreted as video range in Resolve. So we will close our scopes, uh, go to the Media tab and select the Ninja V uh, clip, then right click clip attributes and choose data levels full. And now we are ready to look at the color differences since our contrast is the same. Okay, this is the internal version and this is the external. Internal, external. Just take a look at the color of the jacket. In the internal version it's more orangey and in the external version it is more like red. Uh, the internal version also has slightly darker uh, greens in the background. To understand why this difference uh, happens let's uh, jump into media info and uh, we will check a specific metadata tag embedded into each of the video streams. Okay we are here in media info. And on the left you can see the internal footage and on the right you can see the Ninja V footage. The tag I want you to look at is called Matrix Coefficients. And as you can see it has BT601 in the internal version and BT709 in the external version. What you have to understand here is that both the internal and external files have YUV streams which are converted by the editors to RGB when you display them. And these YUV streams are typically created from RGB values and they can be encoded in different ways. Um, the matrix coefficients tag tells the editor which matrix it needs to use for correct YUV to RGB conversion. And SD footage us usually needs BT601 while HD usually needs BT709. Fuji is an exception though because it still uh, uses the BT601 matrix even though it's HD. And this is not a problem if uh, the software that's used to view these files actually reads the matrix coefficients tag and handles the conversion accordingly. But this is unfortunately not the case with these editors. Uh, they use the BT709 matrix. And there are two possible solutions. You either transcode your footage from BT601 to BT709 or you use a lot that does the same thing. Uh, for transcoding I recommend FFmpeg and this is the command uh, that I will use to demonstrate the procedure. Okay, this is our command. The first parameter is our input file and that's the internal Fuji recording. And we will apply a Z-scale filter uh, where we tell that our input uses the full range as seen here. And we want our output to be to be full range as well because we don't want to lose any precision. Um, this part here tells us that the input file has a BT709 color primaries and our output file will have the same set of color primaries. This part here uh, is for uh, the conversion of the transfer, char transfer characteristics. And this one here is to, uh, for the conversion of uh, matrix coefficients. Uh, 70M stands for 70M. Uh, 70 it is basically the same matrix as BT601. And we will use the ProRes KS um, video codec with, this, with the second profile. It is basically standard quality ProRes. If you want uh, ProRes HQ, then change this to 3. And we will copy the audio stream so we don't uh, re-encode it. And finally, here's our output file name. Now we are ready to append this newly created ProRes file to our timeline. And uh, this is also a full range recording, so we will use full range. 
Now we can look at the color differences. This is the Ninja V file and this is what we converted. And as you can see, they are identical. Now let's go back to the internal unconverted footage and apply the, the fix with a lot I created. Uh, there's a separate version for Resolve and Premiere, so we will apply the Resolve version. And now, as you can see, both the internal and external versions are identical. Okay, now that we know how to fix the problem, we have to see when exactly this fix is needed. Um, this is a H.265 uh, clip, but uh, the X-T3 can also record H.264 and that's the format that the X-T2 and the X-H1 uses. So we import two more clips to the timeline. This is the H.264 version and this is the H.265 version. There was a slight change in lighting, uh, please ignore that, but otherwise uh, they are identical and this tells us two things. Uh, first, we know that the H.265 is interpreted as full range here and because the H.264 is identical to that in contrast, that means that the H.264 is interpreted as full range as well. And we already know that the H.265 clip uh, is shown with the wrong colors, so if the H.264 is identical to that, then it is shown with the wrong colors uh, as well. So we need to either uh, transcode uh, this footage or you know, correct it with the LUT. And this is how it looks when you correct it with the LUT. Before, after, before, after. That's quite a big change. And uh, you have to look at the reds here. Uh, if the reds are orangey, then it's a pretty good indication that you are using the wrong color matrix. I also applied the conversion uh, with FFmpeg, so we can look at the converted clips. And since these are ProRes files using the full range, we will switch our data levels to full. Okay, this is the H.264 footage uh, corrected with a lot and this is uh, what I converted with FFmpeg. As you can see they are identical. This is the H.265 footage without any correction, so we will fix that. And now it looks identical to the ProRes version. Okay, uh, let's see how all these clips look in uh, uh, Premiere Pro CC 2018. Here we are in Premiere Pro and first what you see is the H.265 internal recording and if I switch between the internal and the external you can see that they have the same contrast and because we know that ProRes is interpreted as video range that must be true for the H.265 version as well. And uh, we will have to switch all these clips to full range by going to Effects, uh, Lumetri Presets, Technical and Full to Legal, 10 bit. And now we are ready to look at the color differences. Uh, as you can see, the internal version has more orangey reds and slightly darker greens, just like what we have seen in Resolve. So we will use a lot to correct for this problem. And uh, since this slot is already taken, uh, we go to the Creative tab and choose the Premiere version. Now you can see that even though there's a slight change in the RGB parade, uh, both clips look visually identical. And uh, if I switch between the Ninja V footage and the ProRes that I created using FFmpeg, uh, interestingly, even the RGB parade is exactly the same. Okay, now we are looking at a H.264 clip. 
and uh, this is uncorrected and this is the one that's been corrected with FFmpeg and uh, since this is ProRes and we use the full range we will have to use uh, the correction okay Now, there is only a slight change in saturation between the two, but we can tell that uh, H.264 in this version of Premiere Pro is interpreted with the correct levels and the correct colors. Now let's jump to the H.265 version, and we have already seen that it needs the levels correction. So, we apply it. And we will apply the same one for the ProRes uh, file as well. Let's look at the colors. As you can see, they are different. So again, just like with the first H.265 footage, we have to correct for the wrong uh, YUV to RGB conversion. And now, Clips are visually identical. Now let's switch to Premiere Pro CC 2019 to see if there's any difference there. Okay, here we are in Premiere Pro 2019 and this is the internal H.265 uh, clip and if we compare it to the Ninja V footage we can see a difference compared to the previous version because here the H.265 version is interpreted as full range so we will only apply the range uh, conversion to the ProRes files this time. Okay, let's take a look at the colors. As you can see, uh, we have the same difference in colors as we had in the previous version of Premiere and in Resolve. So we will have to apply the correction for the wrong color matrix. So now they look visually identical with a slight change in the RGB parade. And this is the one that's been converted with FFmpeg and it is perfectly identical to the Ninja V version. Now let's look at some H.264 clips. Okay, this is internal H.264 and this is the ProRes that's been converted with FFmpeg. We will convert this, this to full range. Now we can see that the contrast is identical between the two. But this time the H.264 version seems to have the wrong color matrix. And this is a difference compared to the previous version of Premiere Pro. So we will have to use our lot to correct for this. Now both clips look visually identical with only a slight change in overall saturation. Let's take a look at the H.265 footage. Uh, it, it is interpreted as full range and this is the ProRes version which we will have to switch to full range or to be more precise we will have to apply a full to legal conversion now they have the same contrast but uh, they have different colors and the internal version needs a correction So now they are looking visually identical. And I also wanted to see how these clips look in Final Cut Pro, but uh, since I don't have a Macintosh, I asked three friends of mine with different uh, versions of uh, Mac OS and FCPX to do the same tests I did. And um, here are the results and also the summary of what we have seen so far.
If we want to summarize, what we have seen so far is that different editors handle Fujifilm footage very differently, and sometimes you will need a correction. And uh, it's entirely up to you if you choose the lot or uh, you transcode your footage. But let's just list the pros and cons for each of these ways. The pros for transcoding is that you will uh, be able to edit faster because ProRes is not that demanding on the CPU and GPU. And you will have good colors in all these editors. And uh, you won't have to check if anything's changed when a new version of your editor comes out. But the cons for transcoding is, of course, that it takes uh, time and hard drive space. And if you're considering to fix your problems with, with only LUTs, uh, the pros for that are obviously that you don't have to transcode and you save the time and the hard drive space. But the cons for the LUT uh, are that uh, you need to check for changes every time a new version of your editor comes out. Okay, I believe this is all for now and I will put a link in the description which will lead you to a tip 5 which contains all the LUTs that I've created to fix this issue and it will also have some instructions on how to use FFmpeg to convert your files to ProRes. If you have any comments or any suggestions or corrections, let me know in the comments. See you next time, bye!